Good morning to everybody, once again. Let us turn on the light candle for the Holy Spirit to be present here among us. All right. So today, 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 you know, the song was... uh, covered a couple of things that I'm going to be talking about today. So uh, today we're going to be talking about three truths to build your confidence, right? Uh, We've been talking about stay positive over the last few weeks. Uh, We learned, of course, that uh, last week, um, what did we learn last week? (laughs) We learned that, of course, uh, gratitude Gratitude is the gateway to peace, right? We, we learned those things last week that gratitude is the answer to our pandemic of complaining right now that, the, that, that we're going through. Week before that, we learned about enough of the bad news, right? Enough of the bad news. Enough of the bad news. That we have to feed our faith, starve our fears. Feed our faith, starve our fears. So today uh, we're going to be talking about these these three truths, and and I and I got to tell you that um, I'm just really happy to be here this morning um, to be able to share the word. And for all of you, those of you that are on Facebook, YouTube, later when we post the service, if you're listening, to, if you're watching um, the the reposting of the service at this time, or, or those of you here in person, uh, I just want to you know, I want to give you thanks because you guys inspire me uh, to try and look for things that. Well, that, that can, you can use not only to learn scripture, but also how do you apply it to your life, right? Uh, it's one thing to, to understand what scripture is, but then, okay, that was written 2,000 years ago. How do I apply it to now? And so that, that's because a lot of the things that, are going on, that were going on 2,000 years ago are still going on now <laughs> in a different format, in a different way, but same things, right? And there still are Christians being persecuted. There's still uh, pandemics. There's still things that are going on. Uh, and things that could kill us. You know, in those days, it was the Romans chasing the Christians, but now it's, you know, uh, this COVID and everything like that. So it's, it's just, we always go through the same things, and so how do we apply it to today? And so, I, you know, I just want to shout out to all my mentors that I've had over the years, uh, in these five years that I've been in ministry. Um, you know, I started off just preaching maybe two or three times a, a year, and then uh, in the last uh, two and a half years, you know, preaching at a church, and so... Um, you know, I just want to thank, uh, you know, Pastor Felicia, Pastor John, uh, Pastor Pam, Pastor Matt, Pastor Josh, Pastor Lourdes, Pastor Soltero, and Pastor Salcido. And I just want to give you thanks because you all, if you're watching <laughs> uh, later, I just want to give you thanks because you all helped me to start to listen to the Holy Spirit. And of course, uh, can't do it, anything that I do without the support of my family. So I want to just give you thanks for always being there with my craziness uh, and, uh, and my, and my uh, uh, worries and so forth. So thank you so much. And, that, and that's a gift because I can tell you they, see, they saw something in me. You know, and I was talking to them and, and you know, because you always think like, you're always your worst critic, right? You're, always, you're not sure we're always... Uh, good enough or anything like that, but, when, but that's a gift when you have someone that sees something else that you don't entirely see themselves, um, that's a gift, uh, you know, because uh, we, we deal with lack of security, insecurity, uh, you know, uh, God, am I good enough, um, you know, and, and so for me, it just takes a weird look, like if I'm preaching or something and somebody does a weird, weird look, you know, I start to think, did I say something wrong or... So I'll look at Yadira's facial expressions and I'll be like, okay, uh, uh, maybe I need to explain, elaborate a little more, or maybe I just need to back off a little more, <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't go explaining so much. So uh, it doesn't take so, too much to set me off, right, with insecurities. Um, and so, you know, uh, I tell you, you know, uh, there's a story where there's a gentleman that goes, uh, he's, a, he's a pastor and he goes to a Costco and, uh, and, and this is about like right now, we're all socially awkward, right? Um, and because we don't know what to do. Like, is, do, do I go in for the hug? Do I just do the fist pump? Do I do the elbow? 
Do I just, hey, what's up, brother? You know, uh, uh, hey, what's up, sister? You know, uh, or something like that. You know, we don't, we don't know what to do, right? We, we come and so uh, there's, you go to the store and it's like you see somebody and it's like, uh, you know, it's, you know, you know, we're all like socially awkward right now. And, and there's a pastor that goes to Costco and he, and he says that there, he was there and he's with a mask. And all of a sudden this man starts coming like at racing speed, you know, walking up to him like this and, and he doesn't even have the mask on. And so he's like, oh, you know, what am I going to do? So then he goes, man, you preached an awesome sermon and it's changed my life. And he's like, oh, okay. He goes, oh, tell me some more. <laughs> you know, so he starts doing this and then, and then what, he, what he finds out is that uh, he, he describes a sermon that he did not preach. It was the other pastor from that same church. <laughs> so he talks about how he goes, wow. And he goes, and that right there just sets off my insecurity. Oh, he wasn't talking about me. He wasn't mentioning me. I wonder if my message is getting through. And I, and, and I can tell you that uh, and let's be honest, church, every single one of us lack confidence at some point in our life, right? Um, especially during right now. You know, we have the people pleasers, right? Uh, uh, we want to be people pleasers. People, I'm always sucking up to my boss, or I'm always saying the right thing, or I'm always uh, want to be in good graces, uh, or, you know, we can call them fishers, right? But those people are always fishing for a compliment, I'm not talking about somebody that, that seeks to approve their boss because they're doing a, a good job. Not just because of that, but there's people in this world that want compliments, right? We see it all the time on Facebook, right? You have, uh, let's, you, know, you have people that want to, um, you know, you have, sometimes you see, uh, what, what is going on right now? Uh, they, they'll, they'll put a picture, right? Somebody will put a picture and they're 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 without makeup or something and and it's and it's it's a lot of times you have people that the ladies that are just showing their confidence right but there are also others that ha that need that they need for someone to tell them they look good they need that in their lives and it's not because it's a bad thing it's just a sign of that lack of confidence that they have in their life you know and so it starts off with somebody that's bold and posted, and then before you know it, the majority are going to be those ladies that look flawless, but they feel like they're, not, they're flawed in some way. And because I don't wear makeup, I'm flawed. No, that's how God created you. That's the natural beauty. Guys do the same thing. You know, they, sometimes you see them in a, you know, rocking it here at the gym. You know, do we, is it because of the lack of the confidence? You know, what is it that we have going on right now? And so, uh, so you know, so, it, and, and then the problem is that it leads you in your life to not going for the interview, right? Ah, what's the point? I'm not going to get the job anyway. You know, or I'm not going to enroll in school. I'm in my 30s, or I'm in my 40s, or I'm in my 50s. Everybody else is in their 20s. I'm not going to get sober today. Why? Because most likely I'm going to go pour a glass tomorrow. That's not a way to live. But these inadequacies keep us from doing the things that God knows are best for our lives. So here's the thing. If you get anything today, anything today, I want you to get this. We do not need more self-confidence. We don't need more self-confidence. What do we need? We should cultivate God confidence. God confidence. Um, I posted this, uh, this picture on Facebook, and it said that, you know, we don't need more self-confidence. We need God confidence. And someone actually uh, responded and, and replied and says, it's also called faith. And I was like, ah, yeah, that's right. Faith is the, faith is the knowledge of things hoped for, right? Uh, things hoped for. And so if you've got that thing that you're hoping, and you got that faith, and you got that God confidence, right? You got that God confidence. 1 Corinthians 10, 12 tells us, uh, in, through the message, it says, forget about your self-confidence. It's useless. Cultivate God confidence, right? 
You know, and, and, and you say, okay, well, how come, well, wait a, wait a minute. How come I can't have self-confidence? Like, why, why not self-confidence? That's a good thing, right? Well, I don't need self-confidence because I need to find the way to live my life with a sense of holy boldness, right? Because why? If I place confidence in me, Jeremiah 17 tells us that my heart's deceitful. Jeremiah 20, Jeremiah tells us my heart is deceitful. Why do I place confidence in the deceitful heart that is lying to me all the time, right? Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew that my flesh is weak. I'm not going to put confidence in a weak flesh. What does Paul say? Paul in the church wrote to the uh, church in Romans 7. He says that my behavior is inconsistent, right? My behavior is inconsistent. But look at what King David said. He wrote this so beautifully. Psalm 57. He says, my heart is confident in you. My heart is confident in you. No wonder I can sing your praises. Right? When we put our confidence in God, we can sing his praises even when we feel that we're at our lowest. Right? There's a, there's a song by Michael W. Smith that's, that's called Surrender. Um, in, the, in the song at the beginning, right, when he's going to play, he says, the word says, and in times of trouble, pour out a, a pouring of praise. And that's how we fight our battles. And that's how the song says, you know, this is how we fight our battles. Because we fight while praising God. We praise God. We lift Him up. The reason we need truths to cultivate God's confidence is because our sense of inadequ- inadequacy, inadequacy, sorry, got tongue twisted there, is often rooted in what? Lies. Somewhere along the line, we have believed a lie, a deception about ourselves, and the only way to replace, the ba- the only way to replace and battle those lies are with the truth of God's word, Right? Why? Because God tells us who we are. The world doesn't tell us who we are. God tells us who we are. Look at what Paul wrote to in in, in Romans 12. He says, look, don't be conformed by the pattern and culture of this world, but instead be transformed. How are we transformed, church? By the renewing of our mind. How do we renew our mind? It's because we replace the lies with the truth of God who says who we are. That which is good and acceptable and is perfect will. Right? When he created us, what did he say? He didn't just say it was good. He said it was real good. And when God looked at it, he said it was real good. He created all of all things. He created us in His image. Think about that. If everything He created, He spoke it into creation. And I've said this before. He spoke it into creation. What was the one thing that He made from the dirt with His hands? You and me. So, what are those truths? So if you're taking notes uh, today, um, jot this down. Uh, The first truth is, my God is always for me. My God is always for me. These are the truths that we can uh, build our confidence to know that we we can continue with our lives knowing with that boldness, right? Uh, My God is for me. He's always for me. Uh, Some of you are like me and and grow up with a sense of God was constantly out to get me, right? Um, He was always trying to catch me doing something wrong and smite me or in his wrath or you know, uh, in, in, some, in some denominations, they, 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 that's all they preach, right? Uh, fire and brimstone, fire and brimstone. You know, and, and so uh, we always think that God is always, always to get us. We do something wrong. We feel like that's all he's going to look at. And that we're not any better than what we did that wrong thing. 
I mean, really? Think about it. You as parents, do you just spend your whole time waiting for your son or daughter to do something wrong so you can smite them? No, right? We revel. We love our kids, right? We revel in, their, in, in, in them, and we, we get joy out of them. You know, they do something wrong. Yeah, we have to discipline them, but it's not that we're always looking to see what they're doing wrong. Or we shouldn't be doing that. And it's the same with God. You think God is just always looking at us to see what we do wrong? No. It hurts him, breaks his heart, right? But he's not just looking at us to do what we're doing wrong. He wants to build us up. He wants us to know that, hey, I'm always for you. I'm always for you. Always for you. Paul wrote to the church in Rome, if God is for us, you've heard, the, you know, I'm sure you've heard this verse before. If God is for us, therefore, who on earth can be against me? Who can be against us? Think about that. If God is for us, everybody say for us, who can ever be against us? Right? Who can ever be against us? Who could ever be against us? If my God is for me, cheering me on, thinking that I'm actually pretty special, who on earth? I like, you know, I, I don't care. Who cares what anybody else, right? About anybody else. If God is for me, who cares? You know, one of the greatest joys for me and Yadira as parents have been uh, being involved in the extracurricular activities as our kids were growing up, right? Now, we're not kids anymore. They're, they're adults now, but uh, they're always going to be our kids. And so um, their extracurricular activities, you know, whether it was uh, uh, karate or basketball with Stephanie and uh, then later in band, Stephen with soccer and band and then Samantha with uh, her uh, honor society and then, uh, and then band as well. You know, no matter what it was, one of the greatest things that it was for us was to be there, right? But let me tell you, you think I was a fierce supporter of them? Mama Bear over here. Woo! She'd take on referees. She'd take on people. She'll take them all on. But if you ask my kids, and any, anyone probably that has had a parent that's been like that, how confident can you go out and do the things that you, need, that you can do? Why? Because you know that somebody is back having your back, rooting for you, cheering you on no matter what, no matter what time in the morning, no matter how far we have to drive, no matter what early in the morning, where they're rooting you on, cheering you on, right? That's what God does for you. He's sitting at the edge of his chair cheering you on. Come on. You can do this. You can do this. You can wake up. You can go get that job that you're looking for. You can quit that addiction that you're looking at. You can do those things. Why? Because God is there cheering you on. He is for you. Who can be against you? We live our lives as an overflow from what we already have, right? Not seeking something, but recognizing we already have the approval of God. My life will flow out of His approval, right? We already have His approval. He's for us. Hebrews 10 tells us, Do not throw away this confidence. Trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. So do not throw away this. Everybody say confident trust. Confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings us. You're helping to climb out of a mountain of debt, church. God is for you. You're trying to reconcile a, a, a relationship, maybe a marriage. God is for you. You feel led to start a new business. Your God is for you. You have to believe that he is trying to, he's not trying to catch you, he's trying to compel you. Let me say that again. He's not trying to catch you, he's trying to compel you. God is always for you. Secondly, church, uh, 
This is uh, number two. If you're, if you're taking notes, my God always helps me. My God always helps me. My God always helps me. Right? Hebrews 13 again says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So we say with what? We say with confidence, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. No matter what, no matter what they di- dish out at us, right? No matter what this world, no matter what the enemy, no matter what Satan's trying to do, you know, he only comes to lie, deceit, and steal, and murder, right? But what did God say? Jesus, I came so that you would have what? Life, and life more abundant. So are we going to believe the world? Or are we going to believe God? That's a question that we all have for ourselves right now. Right? Who are we going to believe? No, no, no. Really, truly, who are we going to believe? I'm talking in here. In here. Right? Not here, not what the world tries to deceive you. Not because you're telling you in your mind, oh, okay, I'm going to believe in God, yeah, yeah. But do you believe it here? We talked about this in the What's Next sermon series. When you see through the eyes of your heart, and you say, well, my eyes are up here. <laughs> but the eyes of the heart, it's that sinner that you know that God has you. And that's, that's what we want to look at. And, and the reason I mention these stories, of course, is that, um, you know, it, it's, I'm in this with you. I'm preaching to myself, too. You know, as I read these things and I'm looking at the things, you know, I struggle with some things, too. Um, and let's be honest, you know, when we're looking at the challenges that we have right now, it looks, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. But guess what? When we put that confidence in God and we know that He is for us and we know that He helps us in everything, guess what? In a year or two years from now, you're going to see, wow, man, I've come this far. I thought at that time I was done. Or I thought that, you know, we we weren't going to make it. And a year from now, you will see He was with you the whole time. The whole time. Mike and Aubrey have sang that song before. There was Jesus. In the battles, in the hurdles, in the evening and the what? Like a blessing, there it is. Yes. Like a blessing buried in broken pieces. He's always there the whole time. It was Jesus. It was Jesus. Amen? I can't sing it as good as them, so no, I wouldn't do justice. I wouldn't do justice. So two years ago in February, my dad passed away. And he was someone that I had for many, many years. Uh, I have something that I have to confess to you all. For many, many years, I criticized him of his decisions that he made in his life. What he didn't do with it, what he didn't achieve, etc. You know, being that complainer. I know the, I know the cure for complaining was last week, but I'm getting to a point. <laughs> but towards towards the last ten years of my dad's life, you know, he lived a, a life that was closer to Jesus than I think. Uh, he had ever lived. You know, my mom can vouch that my dad always prayed at night. He had a prayer that he would pray every morning. Uh, they would watch the service, the mass service on TV every Sunday morning, or if they didn't get to come, uh, sometimes they would come with us to church, and you know, I wasn't a pastor at the time. Uh, they would come with us to, to St. Mark's and stuff like that. And when we were all 
in that ICU room with him. I was asked to minister, right? Uh, you know, Sal, you're, you've been preaching, you've been doing stuff, you know. Hey, can you be the one saying the prayers? <laughs> and so all my family was there. Uh, I was holding up uh, my phone because my sister, I had my sister, my sister through Facebook Messenger looking at my dad from Korea. And I tell you, I didn't have the confidence. I didn't have the confidence. You know, I'm like, man. But in that moment, by reading those scriptures, ministering to him at that time, something came and I just felt it's going to be okay. And it was because of those being able to minister to them that I had a peace as we were taking off his life support. And seeing when his heart blood pressure, when his heart rate was at like 20, almost down to 10. My mom was on this side and I could just, and it was a miracle to be able to watch my dad's face go towards her voice. And looking over in her direction, we don't know if my dad had vision at this point, he probably didn't. But I know, we know that he was hearing my mom. He was hearing us all in there with him, praying. God is with you. God is for us. And he helped me during that time. And I was able to minister to all my family. And he gave me this peace. And, and you know, and, and I wonder if, you know, I haven't had a day where I think, where I haven't had my ball day. What does that ball day mean? Well, I haven't had that day where all of a sudden I ball for no reason at all. I haven't had that day yet. I've cried. But I've had this peace that I know that he is with the Father. I know it because of some revelations that were given, that were said afterwards. By my brother-in-law, having a dream of him, bouncing up and down. And see, for those of you that don't, re don't remember my dad or maybe never got to see him, but he, was, he couldn't walk without a walker. And for him to be jumping up and down, <laughs> that was all the revelation I needed. See, God is with us, and no matter what, he works. And where am I getting at? Where am I getting at? Psalm 46, 1. David actually wrote, God is my refuge and my strength. An ever-present help. He is an ever-present help in times of trouble. In fact, his name is Emmanuel. God with what? God with us. Church, God is for you. He's here to help you. And finally, my God still works, is working in me. That's our third truth. My God is still working with me. There are times where I'm at home and I get snappy and all of a sudden some, you know, something just triggers me. And I'm like, later I'm like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> I'm a grown man. I know Jesus. I'm a pastor. Come on. What is wrong with me? And I act like a fool. Does anybody get a little frustrated and you're still struggling with the things that you're struggling with today? After all this time, after all God has done, well, here's what I'm here to tell you. God is not done with you yet. God is not done with you yet. God is still working in me. As a matter of fact, uh, Paul wrote to the, to the church in Philippi and Philippians, he says, being confident of this, that God who began a good work in you will carry it to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. God works in us. He continues to be with us. He continues to build us up all the way until we are in His presence in heaven. He's not going to stop working in you, on you until we are with the Father in heaven. Amen? 
Woo! That preaches right there. Why? Because that means for all eternity. We're not here. This, this is temporary. We're not from this world. And He continues to work in us each and every day. You are good enough. You are worthy. God is for you. Who can be against you? God helps you in times of trouble. He is your strength when you are weak. You know, some of you know this, my story, and, and I can tell you we've been through a lot. We've been through a lot. Things that, you know, everything was forfeited. Uh, my kids were affected. My marriage was hanging on by a thread, and that was all my fault. But I'm like, God, I just want to be free. And then when I was taking those CLM classes for the first time, and I was sitting there in Sacramento in one of the lodges, and I was doing centering prayer. That night, I could hear, feel his presence and his peace and say, Sal, I love you. Yeah, man, that wasn't it. Then again, I heard it, Sal, I love you. And it just went 18 inches straight to my heart, to my soul. And from then on, I knew. I knew something. I needed to do something. And I realized that by your experiences, you are enough. The Bible says you're more than an overcomer, right? By the word of Islam and the words of our story, that's your blessed coming in and out, blessing going out. That you are promised that God, uh, that the promises of God are yes and amen to those who are in what? Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that. Many times over, right? Sometimes when we read, you know, has anybody ever read the Bible like all the way through? I, I, I've read pieces here and there. But if you, if, what I've been told about everybody that reads it is that it tells it over and over again, right? You go to the Old Testament and it's, you find the story over here in Genesis and all of a sudden you find it again in you know, Numbers or whatever and, and it just tells you the same thing over. Why? Why would you think that? Because <laughs> if, if we would get it the first time, right? <laughs> Let's just be honest. <laughs> Right? How many times do you have to tell me something, Yadira? Sometimes? <laughs> yeah, I know. But I pray that every person watching online, all those that are here, present in this room, that just if you're, str with, if you're struggling with these lies don't, and don't seem to stop, God, I pray that you will transform us, transform us with truth. Set us free from our past, from the dialogue in our minds, from the hatred of ourselves and the things that we've done. Because God is for us. God helps us. God is not done working for you. So Paul wrote to the church of Colossians. This is, and I'll close with this scripture. Chapter 1, he says, We've heard of our faith. We've heard of your faith in Jesus Christ. And we've heard of your love for all God's people, which, continue, which comes. Listen to this from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. From your confidence, hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. He has reserved a place for you in heaven. For some of you today, you have the confident hope that heaven is, is your home. You have a, 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 a you know, you have this, this desperate wish, right, that um, that God has something for me better. 
right? You have that wish. And know that you do have it because He has a place for you in heaven. He has a place for you in heaven. And know that we can ask for His help because for us to sin, it's an eternal separation from God, right? That's the bad news. Nothing you can do can change that. But the good news is that Jesus came, was sent from heaven to earth, lived a sinful life, a sinless life, was tortured and died on the cross to pay a debt he did not owe. But he did it for you. He did it for you. Not only did he create you, (laughs) but he broke himself for you. If you do not have that confidence, what do you do? You call out on the name of Jesus, you confess your sin, and I'm telling you, your faith in the cross, you will be saved. Again, you will be saved. You have a God that loves you, is for you, that's helping you, that's not done working for you. If that's you right now, those of you watching right now, just lift up your hands there. I want to pray for you. Those of you here, if you, if you need that, if you just need to know those three truths that God is in you to build your confidence, let us pray. Or Heavenly Father, Lord, I just ask that you be with these folks, Lord. Lord, that you send them their, your strength in times of weakness. Lord, that, that they instill themselves and come to the throne and pray and lift up to you all so that they can be forgiven and that they can live in this life in this self-confidence and boldness, not of self-confidence, but of God-confidence. A God-confidence that they can live their lives boldly, knowing who you are. That you are for us. That you help us. And you're not done working with us. You're still working on us. And as we continue to pray, if it's time, it is time to give your life to Christ. It is time for you to surrender. If that's you, keep your hands raised. And and everybody, let's repeat this together. Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. Help me to let go and for you to be. Help me to surrender my life for my life is not my own. I give it to you. It belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us hand clap. Let us cheer for those who have given their life to Christ today. Church, know that God is for you and he helps you and he's not done working with you. He's not done. He's not done. And so now let's raise our voices in praise and worship to give that praise to God, that God then created us with his hands, breathed life into us, and is for us. Amen.